Okay, so we're going to be doing a fluid dynamics problem using the Navier-Stokes equation. Uh, and so this problem involves uh, fluid flowing in a river. Uh, so it's an infinitely long river. Uh, and it's, it has uniform depth at all points uh, along that length. And the boundary conditions at both uh, edges are such that the fluid flows with zero velocity, uh, i.e. it does not flow uh, at those edges. And that's a typical boundary condition for such a problem. So basically what we want to prove here uh, for this problem is that the fluid velocity profile is parabolic. So the velocity is maximal in the center here. Uh, and as you move to either edge, it drops off parabolically uh, and ultimately reaches zero as you reach the two edges. And so in order to tackle this problem, we're going to be using the Navier-Stokes equation. Uh, and I'll write the equation out in full, uh, and then we can eliminate terms. But before I do that, uh, I want to define the cardinal, sorry, cardinal directions. Uh, so this direction will be x, this will be y, and uh, the vertical depth uh, direction will be z. Uh, and so now we can start uh, working this problem. So the Navier-Stokes equation in full uh, is as follows. So rho, uh, the density times uh, the derivative of the velocity with respect to time plus rho times uh, the velocity uh, dot product with the velocity uh, gradient so the gradient of the velocity dot product with the velocity itself and all of this has to equal the negative gradient of p plus a bulk force term in this case this is going to be it's just going to be gravity so f sub g and then finally mu uh, times del square upon v so we want to be able to solve this equation in uh, in each direction independently, uh, but we're only interested in the x uh, velocity profile for now because that's what we're trying to prove uh, changes with with, with y. Uh, and so we want to we want to consider this equation in the x direction first. So uh, rho times uh, the the partial of the velocity in the x direction with respect to time plus rho times uh, the velocity vector, which is going to be uh, a three component vector, dot product with the gradient of the velocity. So uh, this velocity is only the x direction. This is the complete vector. Uh, so the, the partial of the velocity in the x direction with respect to x, uh, and then likewise with uh, y and z. And this has to equal the right-hand side, of course. So negative gradient of p, uh, well, in the x direction, that's only going to be just d dx uh, of the pressure. Plus, there's no there's no gravitational influence in the x direction because the, the gravity only acts vertically. So that's going to be 0. Uh, plus mu, and then we want this term uh, over here. So the, the second derivatives uh, of uh, the velocity in the x direction uh, with respect to each spatial variable. And so now we can uh, start evaluating this. So since this this river is obviously going to be a steady state system, right? Because uh, if you if you pick a pick a spot and stay there, the velocity should not change with time because it's it's going to be flowing. Uh, in a steady state configuration. So this term will be zero because the time derivative will be zero. Uh, moving on to this next term, we're gonna have rho, uh, and then we're gonna take this dot product over here. So we're gonna multiply corresponding terms and then sum that together. So for this first term, uh, Vx times the, the derivative or rate of change of the velocity in the x direction, with respect to x, that's gonna be zero because the velocity in the x direction doesn't change with x. If you stay here, or if you go over here or anywhere uh, along that along that x-axis, the velocity sorry the velocity should stay the same. So that's going to be zero. For this next term over here, uh, and for this term as well, it's going to be zero because the, the velocity in the y direction and in the z direction are both zero. The the fluid is not moving upwards, nor is it moving uh, along the y direction. So those terms are all going to be zero. And so this entire term will also go to zero. So this entire left-hand side is zero. On this side, we're going to have this pressure, which is going to be a constant, but we'll leave it as this derivative for now. Uh, and then 
uh, we're going to have this, this mu term, so uh, th this entire uh, sum over here. Uh, for this first term over here, that's again going to be zero because uh, it, the, the velocity doesn't change with, with when you move in the x direction. The second term will not be zero because obviously it, it does change uh, along the y-axis. That's what we're trying to, trying to uh, treat over here, to trying to figure out over here. So that's going to that's gonna remain. And this final term is going to uh, gonna vanish as well because the velocity profile theoretically should not change if you move up or down. So uh, re, uh, uh, re rewriting this uh, this system over here, sorry, this this equation over here, and moving this to the left side, we're going to have the partial uh, of the pressure with respect to x must equal mu times uh, the second derivative of the velocity with respect to y, and we can move this mu to the left side as well. Uh, so we can have a one over mu over here. And so now we have to integrate this uh, twice to find the velocity. Uh, uh, in the x direction as a function of y. So if we do the first integration, uh, we're going to have uh, the, the, we're going to be left with the first derivative, and that's going to be equal to the integral uh, one over mu uh, of the partial, uh, and then obviously with respect to uh, y, and that's going to be equal to one over mu times this uh, pressure gradient uh, times y plus c1. And so we're going to do the same procedure again, integrate again. And so we're going to be left with uh, 1 over 2 mu times the, the pressure gradient times y square plus c1y plus c2. And this is going to be equal to vx. Uh, and so as you can see, uh, this is obviously a parabolic function because there's a y square, a y, and then a constant. And obviously uh, the exact properties of this function will, will vary depending on, uh, for example, the viscosity or the pressure gradient uh, or, or other factors. Uh, but overall, uh, we, have, we have successfully proved that the velocity profile is indeed parabolic. Uh, and with the boundary conditions being zero at either point, uh, we can further uh, uh, we, we can further eliminate uh, some of these uh, constants if we would like uh, but but for, for the purposes of this video we just want to prove that it's a parabolic velocity profile uh, and so we'll leave it at that point uh, so thank you all for listening